Hello, and welcome back to ERP Tips and Tricks. Today, Sachin Thakri will be walking us through the next part of how to create a purchase order. Last time, Sachin showed us how to create the stocked line. And today, he will be showing us part three, the non-stocked line. Take it away, Sachin. Thank you, Erika. So, hello folks. Uh, we did the stock line. We added the stock line to the purchase order. Today, in today's session, what we are going to do is we are going to add the non-stock line to the purchase order. Uh, as we did for the stock line, you could see under the purchase order section, you clicked on the stock and, and you were able to enter that. Uh, today, we are going to click on the non-stock. So what is a non-stock? Non-stock is those kinds of material or the stocks which you do not maintain in your inventory. So they are either, you know, uh, consumed or they are kind of not evaluated within the inventory. So those like uh, if the company needs to order for staples or files the, and uh, some supplies for cleaning supplies and all, which generally they don't stay in the stock, they are kind of consumed. So those are the ones which are called non-stocked items. And in SysPro, you could place orders for non-stock items similar to what I just said. The moment you clicked on the stock line, now you see you don't see the warehouse. There is no requirement of the warehouse. It's just showing me the PO line. Uh, and then the, the non-stock code, I can create on the fly whatever I need. Okay. And so what, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add a code of my own, which I I'm creating off the fly and that will be used when we kind of save the purchase order okay so we're creating a non-stock line for buying cleaning supplies okay so the cleaning supplies could be your stock code if you need to maintain anything else that's fine if you need to maintain a number that's fine too so if you say that all your non-stock will always be a code will be a 999, you could do that. Or just as I said, I could maintain the, you know, any alphanumeric value there. Same thing goes with the description. If that's what is getting printed on your purchase order, you want to make sure that uh, those in information are maintained in the description field as well. This is a 50 characters field. It will let you and enter as much as you want uh, and you could go from there. Once you enter that, tab out again, as we do always do, just remember to do that and put your quantity, how much ever you need that. So let's say we need 10 quantities of the cleaning supplies. Uh, at this point, the UIM could be whatever you give it now. You could give it a case, you could give a box, you could give it each. Uh, again, it's uh, off the fly. You can you, you don't need to maintain it anywhere else. So for it to show up here, right now by default it will do eaches. But if you have anything else, you could do that. Uh, tab out from here. Now you get to the catalog. If there is a supplier, as I said in the stock line, um, that if if you want to maintain the supplier's uh, stock code number there, that you could do it. If you are going to uh, use this for a specific job and you don't want to use it you know, consume it anywhere else, you could assign it to that. And the due dates, uh, we spoke about it um, as it defaults to the current date. If you have some dates which you can only buy, then you could put the current date on that. Okay, um, as we go under this, uh, the one thing which generally happens or is required for non-stock lines is they are reported based on a general ledger where you would like to um, post that receipts right because there is no inventory getting posted because there is no inventory uh, for for the non-stock uh, this would always go under a general ledger if you already know the general ledger you could maintain that uh, you have you have already maintained you know the the uh, general ledger for non-stock you could always do that uh, as you see, there are general, different general ledgers which have been assigned to the uh, for the non-stocks for different warehouses, various regions. You could use that. 
and that could be associated with that when you are doing it okay rest all information generally it is more if it is product class is defined for non class uh, so that you can report report on the non stock as well is kind of the product class you would like to use so that is kind of what you would maintain the ledger code both are not mandatory uh, if the non stock product class is uh, a ledger code is also maintained to it that would take that as well it would get associated with it the price is the price what you want to enter this would be pretty manual not like the one where you previously you could do by the list the supplier list no that is not uh, how you would do that for non stock non stock you would enter it manually whatever it is uh, the last price paid for a selected the same supplier and the stock code you could select it but at this point we don't have a supplier who's selling uh, non stock so you need not worry about that okay having said that enter all of those tabbing out you would go and save it as a non stock line and that word so if the ledger code is incorrect it's going to uh, or it's it's supposed to not supposed to be a control account it's going to pop you up and it's going to let you know that this is a control not a control account if you want to change it at this point we did not do that we saved it and as you see in the previous session we created the stock line there it was showing up in the summary below now we have a non stock line right so that's how the non stocked line on a purchase order is created this completes the third part of our process on how to create a purchase order with the non stock line check back for our fourth and final part on how to create a purchase order by adding the miscellaneous charge and freight thank you thank you sachin be sure to like and subscribe the crawford software youtube channel in order to stay connected with all the best erp tips and tricks thank you